Alright, picking up where we left off here, looking at problem number five. Uh, we wanted to graph each number on the complex plane and give the absolute value for each. So to graph these ones, we treat these just like it was a uh, XY coordinate plane, except now we're treating the uh, horizontal axis like it's a real axis and the uh, vertical axis is I. So uh, 4 plus 4I, uh, sorry, 4 plus I, get plotted going 4 to the right and 1 up. Just like that. Now look at the next one, negative 5i. Where does that point get plotted? Well, to get to negative 5i, we just have to go uh, 5 units down. Cool. Next one, 2 minus square root 3i. Just approximate the square root of 3. It's about 1.7. Uh, let's plot that point. There we go. So now if they have all those points on there, let's get the absolute value. Absolute value, once again, is just code word for... Pythagorean theorem. So going back here, recognize that with 4 plus i we have a leg of 4 and a, another leg of 1. So Pythagorean theorem. We have our answer there, the square root of 17. Moving on to the next one. Pythagorean theorem is really not necessary with this one because if the absolute value is uh, really the distance that value is away from 0, the distance that negative uh, 5 i is away from 0 is just simply 5. Cool. Now the next one. 2 squared plus negative square root 3 squared. Working that problem out, we really have 4 plus 3, uh, which gives us 7. So our answer here is going to be the square root of 7. And there we have it. Let's take a look at the next problem. All right, so 6, expressing each number into polar form. Well, remember, when we were moving into this section, it was 9, 6. Converting these rectangular points into polar form is no different than when we were dealing with real numbers. We just now just need to modify uh, our previous formula to look something like this. Instead of x's and y's, we have a's and b's. Instead of x comma y, we have a plus bi, which is what we see here. We need to change all these not into r comma theta, but into r cis theta. So we start the same way we just started all the other problems. We need to use Pythagorean theorem. So on this one here, 4 plus 4 i. You could recognize this as a 45, 45, 90 right triangle which could lead you to four square roots of two right away. Um, but if you didn't catch that, you can just definitely go through and run through it with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, we get square root 32, and we can simplify that square root. Now we need, we need to find the direction, so let's do that with inverse tangent. All right, now with that 45 degrees, it would be a good idea to check your quadrant, even though we know it should work out here because we're dealing with everything in the first quadrant. But double, double, check, double check your quadrants. Both first quadrant, now we can write our coordinate, not as r comma theta, but as r cis theta. All right, next problem. Look at b over there, Pythagorean theorem. Pretty straightforward there. Just make sure that when we're squaring those negatives that we keep them positive. Just think about it. Don't use the calculator for that. The calculator can really lead you to a wrong spot. Inverse tangent. Notice here we get negative 26.6 degrees. If we double check our quadrants, we're in for a rude surprise here, right? The quadrants don't match. So when those quadrants don't match, now we add 180 to get us to the 153.4 degrees that we need. Cool tricks, cool tricks! Alright, now take a look at this here. Don't forget that you could use a calculator to get this 153.4 degrees. First thing you need to do is hit the second button, then hit your purple apps key. You'll get to this angle menu. What you're looking for when you do that is this one right here, number six. Once you press that, enter in your values just like you would with an X and a Y. Hit enter, and then you can get the 153.4 degrees that you need. So now we can write our final answer here, square root of 5, cis 153.4. Final uh, problem here, 4, negative 2, uh, square root 2i. Pythagorean theorem. Got 3 square roots of 2. We have 16 there, plus the square root, negative square root of 2 squared, which will just make it a 2, so 16 plus 2 gives us 18. Square root of 18, we can put a 9 in there. Uh, so in other words, long story short, we can simplify the square root to 3 square root to 2. Uh, inverse tangent, now to get theta. Now we get negative 19.5 degrees. Check your quadrant. Cool. 
4 to the right and down the square root of 2. And then also negative 19.5, that's uh, going to go down and to the right as well, putting us both for both those points in the fourth quadrant. So there's no need to change this here. Okay, It's the quadrants that dictate whether you're adding 180, not the fact that you get a negative angle. We talked about that in class, so watch out for that on test day. And so there we have our final answer. All right, now question number seven. Now we're asking you to find the product when you multiply two numbers in polar form. I'm probably not going to have you guys leave it in polar form. Uh, we talked about this in class. I'm probably going to have you convert it to rectangular form. Uh, so to do that, um, keep in mind the product formula, which just is quite simply put is we multiply our r's together and we add our thetas up. So we're looking at this problem. Let's multiply our r's together. Uh, and then add our thetas up. So 6 times 4 gives us 24, and pi over 2 plus pi over 4 would give us 3 pi over 4. Now if we wanted to convert this into rectangular form, we have to use the same form we did in the past, uh, r cosine theta, r sine theta. So we're going to take our r, 24, multiply it by the cosine of 3 pi over 4, and that will give us our a value. Realize that the cosine of 3 pi over 4 would be negative square root 2 over 2. We can reduce that with the 24 to give us negative 12 square root of 2. Now we move on to sine. As a way to find b, realize that the only thing that really changes is the fact that we go from negative square root 2 over 2 to positive square root 2, 2 over 2 because we're in the second quadrant. Sine must be positive. So the only thing that ultimately changes here going from sine, uh, cosine to sine is that we have now we have positive 12 square root of 2. Please don't forget to repackage that as an a plus bi number, so we have negative 12 square root of 2 plus 12 square root of 2i. Double check your quadrant. So now we're good to go. Quadrant 2 for both. Let's do the same thing for the one down here. Multiply our r's, add our thetas. Simple, simple. r cosine theta, r sine theta. Notice this time the cosine of 180 is going to make negative 1, so we're going to take negative 1 times 10 to give us negative 10. Sine of 180 is 0, so we're not going to have a bi here at all. So we have negative 10 plus 0i, or we can just call it negative 10. Well, finding the quotient is a very similar concept. Instead of multiplying the r's, we're going to divide them. And instead of adding the thetas, we're going to subtract them. So what we're going to do here first, divide the r's. So 3 divided by a half should make 6. And 135 minus 180 would give us negative 45. You know what to do. You know what to do.